Uh, this is still pretty abstract, but it's basically the core ontology. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and the reason for the abstraction is if you think about large systems that have been developed, they design around a set of concepts, right? So the, the structure of the, what kind of data are we gonna uh, manage in this application? That's anticipated by the designer. So the world is sort of constrained by the designers of the application. But when we look at an open-ended um, ecosystem, pattern after living systems, um, the whole idea is to allow the others to, to put their own concepts on the platform, right? So we can't anticipate it. So we need um, uh, a, a way that, that doesn't constrain the innovation of what can emerge. Yep. So um, that may or may not make sense, but hopefully it'll make a little more sense as we go. So the four main elements of the platform are uh, agents, means, resources, and services. Um, and so agents, uh, again, inspired by whole chain agent-centric architecture um, uh, and building on that. So what I uh, understand about whole chain, uh, and I'm just reacquainting myself with the latest implementation. So I, you know, I still have ignorance in this area. I, I'm happy to be uh, enlightened about things that I misstate or mischaracterizations or whatever. It's all a learning process. I'm just, like, I'm just kind of sharing my current understanding. But in that current understanding, when Holochain talks about agent-centric, their concept of agent is a computing node. Mm -hmm. right? And so nodes um, have some sort of you know, operating environment. Um, and, uh, but, but the data is stored on the node, right? And that's the whole notion of all data is local. And so I can store data in a private chain or I can store shards of data in a shared chain. Um, but it's the, the source of truth is local. So unlike a global blockchain where you have a single uh, global database, again, distributed across multiple nodes, but but with an eye towards trying to get a single source, a single definition of what truth means, yep. single chain, if you will. Um, here, truth is all local, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's the concept of agent. What I'm doing is basically expanding that concept of agent. My definition of agent is simply anything that is capable of sensing and responding to its environment. And so by that definition, a quark, an atom, a molecule, a cell, an organ, an organism. These are all agents as yep, our organizations, enterprises, economies, the earth itself senses and responds to its environment. So the earth as agent. So it's a very general notion um, and it's fractally related. So part of what I've been thinking about is how do you take the the, how do you build on top of the whole chain concept of agent as node? How do you take that agent centricity out to those other um, holarchy of agents, basically? And that's what's going on with agent. So there's agent to agent relationships. Um, there's relationships basically between each of these four things. Memes are central concepts. You know, it could be uh, any. Uh, like governance models, like if I'm, well, to give you a concrete example, let's say I'm starting a food co-op, right? And um, trying to source uh, using re regenerative architectural practices, uh, sorry, regenerative agricultural practices and trying to grow healthy food and uh, create, you know, an ecosystem where, where I can uh, make that available. And I've looked at how co-ops have operated in the past and said, you know, the, the, the sometimes the way they make decisions in co-ops where they try and do it totally egalitarian, totally flat, it ends up, you know, kind of failing. So are there other ways of doing decision-making? Are there other governance models, other ways of doing choice-making than just pure consensus? And so you run into things like liquid democracy, and holacracy and sociocracy and, and you know, 20 others of people that have pioneered alternate ways of thinking about doing decision-making. 
Well, yep. those are all memes that they could put in the meme pool, right? So yep. a gene pool that genetic organisms can draw on. We have a global meme pool, if you will, where if I'm trying to start up the co-op and I'm saying, well, yeah, I, I'm not crazy about what I know in terms of governance. So there are alternatives out there. So I could go out into the global meme pool and maybe find sociocracy and say, well, that seems to have the elements that I want. It's not a top-down power dissemination hierarchy model, but it is one that allows you to avoid sort of the paralysis of, of some other decision-making models. I don't really know that much about it. So but are there other agents out there that offer maybe training classes or, or ways that can help me get going with sociocracy? Or even, so that would be an example of a an agent meme relationship that maybe some agents and I'll bring in services here. So maybe there's some other agent that as a service offers a consulting service or a training service that allows you to get started with sociocracy. Yep. Right. And um, so basically agents offer services um, and through those services, resources can flow in yep. both directions. So you can yep. define a reciprocal value flow. So it could be as simple as, yeah, I'll you know, sell you 100 hours of consulting for you know, X dollars, right? Um, but there's nothing that limits it to um, a monetary transaction. There's other kinds of resource flows that, that don't depend on money. Or if it, if it is based on currency, it could be on, let's say, a demiraged cryptocurrency as opposed to a fiat national currency. So those would be examples of, of, you know, when I offer a service, part of the definition of the service would be, here's a memetic signature of that service. These yep. are uh, concepts behind it. Um, yep. And uh, they describe the, 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 the resource flow. So I'm offering this service, you know, in this kind of flow model. And then by accepting that service, um, I now have an agreement and then we can start doing that value exchange and get the reciprocal value flow happen. Yep. So that, <laughs> that is maybe a, a bit of an example. Um, yeah, the other thing I, may, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, yeah, well, okay. pretty rough but in, anyway you know feel free to chime in yeah no i get you i get you okay can you can you go into the first thing the map a platform for global transformation sure um yeah so it's an open-ended decentralized computing and application service platform uh, whose audacious goal is to foster the emergence of self-organizing evolutionary transformation. And it's doing that, as I thought about how do you accomplish global change, I began to see this happening at four levels. Personal, because it starts with personal awakening, personal, you know, mm. building awareness about um, what really the systemic uh, basis for our crises are. It's not just this evil politician or that evil you know, CEO or what have you, it actually goes much deeper than that, right? Um, and so becoming aware of at a personal level, what are these sort of unstated assumptions that the whole society is baked on that I haven't maybe thought about um, that, that I can be awakened to to understand, sort of wake up to what's, what's going on and also wake up to what's happening, what some of these novel ideas that people have uh, the, the, there's fantastic amounts of innovation happening. Um, and so become awakened to that. Um, start to establish a sense of, of um, personal sovereignty and, and responsibility and start to say, hey, you know, again, what can I do as an individual given my strengths and weaknesses and experiences and shortcoming and so forth? What, what, what can I do? Um, but ultimately then, once I start this sort of process of awakening and find out more about what's available, then I want to connect with others. So that gets into this sort of interpersonal space of connecting in community and 
and, and perhaps intentional action. But to amplify our agency, we need to then maybe organize into bigger structures, self-organize into larger structures, um, and ultimately inter-organizational, get these uh, organisms interacting with and cooperating with one another and then take that to global level. So there's a whole um, section in this book on, on, on sort of that theory of change and how you move from personal to interpersonal to organizational to interorganizational. And the idea of the map is to support, to provide support for each one of those transformations. So how can I help people awaken? How can I help them inform and connect? How can I help them organize? How can I help organizations interact and cooperate um, without getting into these, you know, without relying on these sort of top-down power dissemination hierarchies uh, that have been dominant in US, in, in um, civilization for 5,000 years. Yep. Again, realize this is still pretty abstract. Yep. Um, um, <laughs> I'll show this picture maybe else. Wow, wow. Yeah, but this is really cool for people to see because basically you're going, you're, you're, you're deeply pragmatic. You've been involved in architecting and building all these solutions for, um, you know, to come, you know, for, for companies, as you say earlier, that want to sustain a competitive advantage. And then you've built out this, you know, interplay, um, so interesting this sort of agent resource interplay interacting at the mimetic level as a way of shifting the way society operates and consciousness etc but really at a pragmatic level so i think like it's actually perfect for people to see because this is maybe not as well thought through and with the same experience level as you but this is a, a something that attracts people into the holochain ecosystem is their sense of the possibility that this might be these these kind of shifts might be possible but on a really grounded level yeah absolutely man yeah thank you for framing it in that way because I, I when i look at the holochain community i see lots of enthusiasm um and and a sense of potential but also sort of a groping towards how do we, yeah, how do we pull all this together, right? And so um, how can we, you know, so as a, as a drawing on my experiences as, as an enterprise architect, what I'm hoping to be able to do is to help foster this sense of cooperation, foster synergy within the whole of chain environment, yep. within that ecosystem, right? So that each people, um, you know, without constraining people's creativity, because it's, you, in fact, you want to amplify it, right? Give people whatever wants to emerge through different individuals, you want to give them a space where it can really flourish. Um, but I think you can do that by providing uh, the right platform support for it, so they can really give expression to their, to their ideas and not get caught up in solving the same problems again and again and again. Yep. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. And like you said, I, my, I get off on seeing things work, right? So, yep. <laughs> so uh, I, what I uh, shared sounds very abstract and theoretical, but really in my background, what I've always done is started from that, as, you know, with the sort of a vision, but work to make it real, yep. right? And seeing it in action where the true juice comes for me. So I'm, I'm very anxious to to um, you know, put this into practice and, and, and make it real. Sweet. Well, I would love to chart some of that path with you if that, if you would be up for that. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. because uh, yeah, like this is like you know, yeah, it's really nice to see that combination of like the dreamer as well as the pragmatist like rolled together. And I think like as as we chart this, then one of what's going to be awesome for people who who people who are in that dreamer space but not with the same experience as you to to have a role model or someone who's who's followed this path with a combination i think can can open up a lot of possibilities for those you know for people for people to bring their dreams into this ecosystem to see what is realized yeah absolutely yeah and i, I it's exactly i'm looking to have those conversations i realized and i started to connect with 
Uh, there's some great stuff happening in the ecosystem. The Adam project, the, the Nico, yes. uh, the Holo Ria project, the neighborhoods projects, um, Junto. There, there's there's some really exciting stuff happening, um, and just starting to have conversations there. But I realized I needed this sort of restatement of this map vision so I can bring something to the conversation a little more concrete. You know, with, with something people can read and look at and so forth. So. Right now, I'm sort of focused on getting that expressed, so I have something to bring to the party. Um, uh, but then, yeah, I fully, uh, very interested in engaging these kinds of uh, conversations because I think it's through our through our cooperation and co-creation that that uh, we'll really get the stuff cranking here. So I'm looking Ex forward to that. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And totally right. Yeah. I was I was on with um the Junto guys last week and like. They were giving a little bit of a preview of Adam and conceptually of perspectivism. Um, and then Eric, Karis Baron and I have been doing a lot of things around wear and a little bit around sin and stuff he's building. And yeah, you just see it and it feels like, you know, art had written that sort of Cambrian explosion of creativity article series. And I really, that's, that's the first thing that came to mind when I'm seeing this. It's like, why should I be so excited about where, you know, and yet I feel like a tiny kid when I'm playing with it. Okay? <laughs> and it's, it's literally me placing myself and other people placing themselves on a map. Yeah. 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 But then you suddenly that, that is me placing myself on a map. That's In right. a digital sense. That is not <laughs> my data center down the road. That is not Google. That is not anything. That is me. Yeah. And it's suddenly it's, it's just that, that shift is just so wild. So yeah, it's an yeah, but I I really think it is an amazing time for creativity in this ecosystem. Um, but yeah, like your journey of taking this concept, and I know there's going to be so many people watching here thinking, "Hey, that's what I want for the world. I want my ver I want to bring my version of this to life. How on earth do I do it?" Um, and yeah, generally they seem to like, yeah, generally there's a bit of a pattern where they enroll other people to say like, this is the way you must do it as in getting the social mass around something will like build the solution. And there's again, there's something beautiful around, you're always talking about collaboration, et cetera, et cetera, because you don't have that same thing. Like you, you, you could, you can build stuff. Yeah, so I don't, I, I'm first to tell you, I don't have the answer. I don't think I anyone. Right? I know you don't. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and the way I think about the meme pool, right, is instead of arguing about who's right, oh, I think holacracy is better than sociocracy. It's like, put them both in the meme pool. You don't have to argue. Mm. Put yourself in the map, put your ideas in the map, right? And then those that work, people mm. that resonate it, they try it out, it works or it doesn't work, they provide feedback into the platform. Those that work, let the evolutionary process operate, right? So those that work will grow. And those that don't will tend to subside. Not because of some, you know, uh, arguments and winning a debate. Yeah. It's like proven in action. This, this really fits. Or maybe this one fits in this kind of context. This, this one works better in this other kind of context. So now as an agent, I can do my own assessment of what is my context and yep. make my own choice about which of those seems to fit better, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. 